<laughs> so we're over here with our friend and awesome, awesome guy, Don Gomez. We wanted to jump on, on a call with him and and talk to him uh, and, and, you know, and, and hear um, his story, um, you know, like great things that he has gone through. And right now he's one of the, I don't know, maybe the top uh, district manager in, in, the, in, in, the, in the East Coast for Sun Room. So we want to welcome him and, and say thank you for, for jumping on the call with us. Don is a legend. Yes. I, I appreciate you guys, you know, giving me the time and the platform. Uh, I'm super grateful uh, every time I get the opportunity to just, you know, uh, give a little insight, share my story, um, because I, I believe that everybody's at this in a path, um, the path of success, I call it, right? Um, there, we should be focused on inspiring and motivating uh, while we follow that path. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. Second interview now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take it a little different, right? Uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, let's talk about sales, we can talk about uh, a little bit of personal development and what really shaped my life right now. And um, one of the key components to my current success. Um, and just a little bit about myself. I know we spoke last time uh, when we had lunch, um, you know, some of the things that, that shape my success right now were probably uh, moments of hardship. And, and I believe that everybody who is experiencing success or is going through hardship right now um, is part of the process. I mean, I always, I always tell people sales, right? Sales is very similar to how life works. And, and I, I think that's one of the most valuable things that being in sales, whether you're doing real estate, door to door, any type of sales, um, the real value behind doing sales is actually dealing with the scribbly line, right? Because that's what life is, right? It's like a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. One day you're up, one day you're down. Uh, that's how sales are. I mean, you, you can have a week where you're crushing sales and then the next week you're like, can I even do this job? Like <laughs> what's going on here, right? And I, I believe it and what I found the most successful people in sales are the ones that stay even keeled the ones that stay straight line, even though the life life or the sales process is squiggly, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you stay straight line, the more success you're going to find. So it, it's kind of like in life and in sales, you can't let your highs get too high and your lows get, uh, get too low because that's when you get stuck, right? And I always, you know, I always try to evaluate because I'm really good at self-awareness. And one of the things that has helped me the most is being self-aware, okay? Self-aware of the things that I think, my actions that I take, and my processes. Because, like, that's what, uh, you know, how you, get, how you become successful. How do you become successful? The way you think, the actions you, you take, and what processes that you have that help you be successful. Because it's like you're going to battle alone when you have a, a, an army going with you, you're going to be more successful, right? And that army is the people that are around you and your processes, right? You got to go into business with a game plan, right? You can't just say, hey, I'm going to wing it. I'm going to wing this sale or I'm going to wing, I'm going to open up a company and I'm going to wing it, okay? Um, so you want to have your processes, but there's a thin and a fine line where you want to have your processes but you want to take action, right? Because a lot of times we get paralyzed by wanting to create a process, right? Yeah, create the process, but take action while you're doing it. Because a lot of times we're like, okay, so let me figure out how to do this and then I'll start taking action, mm -hmm. right? And then we get paralyzed because we get stuck on something so minimum, so small, like a, like a fractional, um, a frac ideas that's so small so fractional that we just get paralyzed and we say you know what maybe this business is not a good idea right. maybe this business is not uh, you know it's not meant to be um or, and, or let, me, let me wait for the perfect moment right right it's <laughs> a big and, one and without knowing that if we are taking actions we might be able to find that answer that we're looking for right, right. that's small fractional thing that we're, we're trying to seek and find that's going to help us be successful in what we're doing. Yeah, that's right. Good information right there. And, and the way you think, I, I think a lot of people could relate to what you're saying. Not, 
in outside of sales, right? Um, so I'm thinking um, you're you're you love going over here and talking about uh, self awareness and motivating people, which and, and you're giving back to us now at this point. And I just met him maybe what three weeks ago, and I said we need to interview this guy because I know you're a legend. Everybody, as, as soon as we posted the, <laughs> the interview on Facebook, legend, 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 and yeah. solar. Right. But then we really got to understand who you are personally, mentally. But let's talk about the people that don't know Don and don't know who surrounds Don and the people um, want to know, like before Don became Don now. Right. Let's back back a little bit to understand who you are as an individual now and versus who you what you came from. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your background. 100 percent. And I appreciate the legend comment. Um, <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that we have to be really cautious and self-aware is that social media has conditioned us to see the success, like the nice cars, the, the houses, the, uh, we're just posting that 15 second clip on how good our life is, right? But what's more important and more valuable is who we were and where we come from, right? right? Because that's literally what shapes us as individuals. So to get a better understanding, I came uh, from Colombia when I was nine years old. Um, you know, like any immigrant child, you, we grow up seeing our parents struggle, right? And all these questions, because like our life is based on the questions that we ask ourselves. And I remember as a kid always wondering like, why do we always have to move? Like we all, we're, all, we're constantly looking for the cheapest apartment. And it, we weren't looking for the most spacious apartment. It was just like the cheapest one. And every time we found a cheaper one, it was worse than where we were. And I'm like, why, why am I put in this situation where we, we're constantly moving? Every year it seemed like we moved. Um, to the point I was talking to my wife the other day, she's like, how many times did you move? And I think I counted like 18, 18 19 times. It, it was just constantly moving. And I, I, you know, I kept asking myself, like, why is life so unfair? You know, I left Colombia thinking the U.S. Was, was a better place. Um, you know, money grew, grew on trees and we didn't have to worry about uh, mm -hmm. anything. We just, you know, came to America and, and all the financial problems were fixed. But that wasn't the reality. And it's not the reality then. It, it wasn't the reality then. And it's not the reality now. Um, but, yeah, I came, I came as a, as a, as a, as a nine-year-old child. Uh, with hopes of living a, an easier life. And what I found was that that wasn't necessarily true. But today, where I sit today, I'm so grateful for those experiences right. because those experiences shape who I am and the way I, uh, I, the, the way I view business, in fact, the way I view life because um, we don't realize that we are a product of, our experiences, our past experiences, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I'm so grateful because since I came to this, to this country, it was hardship, like it was constant hardship that we went through. And I saw my mom just working really hard. You know, my mom, it wasn't like, like my mom wasn't working hard. She was working really hard, like straight hustler. You know what I mean? Like- That's yeah. where you come from. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's where, that's where I, I got the hustle from. You know, I, I just, I, I thrive in work ethic. I love being known for the hardest worker in the room. I want to be known for that. Um, and what I realized is based on what I saw as a child has blessed me with work ethic. You know what I mean? So like my mom would be the, the type to be working a full-time job. And then she's selling arepas, she sells flowers. <laughs> and I remember it's funny, uh, one, of my, one of my reps, Louis, his uncle, who grew up with me, um, he's like, yeah, I knew Don was going to be a hustler because um, I remember when we were like nine, 10 years old, when we we're all playing, you know, baseball, football, he would take a whole day off during like Valentine's Day or Mother's Day, and he would legit drag me out of the park and he would pay his mom for some flower arrangements and I would take him to go sell them at the barber shops. Oh my wow. God. <laughs> as a little kid, I just, I just knew that there was more possibilities of making money than just a regular job. 
right. right? Because I saw my mom struggling, so she had to always figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm growing, I was uh, a, a sports fanatic. I love sports. You know, uh, my favorite sport uh, is basketball. And that was like my, it became my, my life for, for a long time where, you know, after school, I wasn't the best student um, at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was very passionate about basketball. So most of my time I was spending uh, playing basketball after school until I got to the age of 16. Okay. And then I went the wrong path. You know, I started going, hanging out, partying, drinking, um, you know, in the streets, just doing stupid stuff, you know, growing up. Um, but I always had that respect for my mom, right? Because, and, and I think that's one of the things why I didn't get really stupid because I always had that respect for my mom because she worked really hard for me. So I would kind of flirt with the line of being stupid, but I knew my boundaries to a, to a certain extent. And fast forward all the way through my, you know, twin, uh, when, I, when I was 25, 27, I landed this opportunity, right? Um, but throughout my whole entire life, it was like a struggle with money. And, you know, there was, there was times where I was quote unquote making more money where I could have gone ahead but I was always like trying to, you know, just make it happen. Like it was like paycheck. I was living paycheck uh, by, by paycheck every single like week, my whole entire life. And granted, I started working when I was like 15, 16 years old. Okay. So in school, I was literally going to school full time. Well, I wasn't even going to school. I was present physically, yeah. but mentally I wasn't, I wasn't there uh, at all, but I was always tired. And I remember one of my teachers, uh, they were asking me, they're like, why are you always tired? I, I'm, I'm wondering why are you always like tired? Like every single day you come here and you, for the first two classes, you're sleeping. And I'm like, well, can I be honest with you? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm working a full-time job. And she's like, what? You're like 15. I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta pay some bills, you know? And again, the questions, right? The questions that we ask myself uh, ourselves, shape who we are and I was always wondering and asking myself legit like I would talk to myself and say why is life so unfair that I'm working a full-time job while my friends don't have to work or they're working a part-time job and they're buying all the stuff they want yet I have to give most of my paychecks to my mom so we could cover the rent like why why is life so unfair mm -hmm. right so I was basically a victim of my environment at a really young age. And I think a lot of people are. We're wondering why things are happening to us. Why are we going through hardship? Why are we live in paycheck to paycheck? Like, why is this happening to us? And the reality is, it's not happening to us. It's happening for us. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm realizing that now, I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful that I had to start work, that, that I had to start work at a such, such a young age because it, it taught me what work ethic was, right? But then again, the squiggly line, right? I knew how to work really hard, but I had no clue how to handle my finances. I would make $500 a week and I would spend 700. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us live like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes, it comes back from where we come from. You know, my mom always figured it out. And she would always say, as long as we have money for the rent and for food, we're good. Everything else will fix itself. And magically, it would, right? <laughs> magically, it would. It, and it's, it's always going to be like that. It's always going to be like that. So the way we think, so it's like kind of like what we think we deserve is what we get, right? right? If we think we just deserve to just pay the rent and, and the food and get by, then that's what we're going to constantly get. And I had the opportunity to land this job uh, back in 20, uh, late 2014, beginning of 2015. Um, no, 2015, I'm sorry. And, you know, same thing, applying my work ethic to this, uh, to an opportunity that doesn't have a ceiling. You know, you can make as much money as you want and as you think you deserve. So this is when you jo joined, well, back then Vivint. So it was Vivint, yeah, it was Vivint Solar back then. Okay. And um, for my first year and a half, um, I did pretty well, okay? 
It was the first time I ever made over six figures. Okay. So, so wait, wait, let's back up a little bit because I know when we, you know, when we sat down with, with Don, there was um, um, like, how did you get into solar? Like, how did you decide to get into like, inter- like you know, just being an independent contractor pretty much like working commissions and, and how did you figure that out? So um, I was working at the bank. <clears throat> I got a job at Citizens Bank. Uh, I ended up leaving Citizens and I joined a different bank. Uh, he's Boston Savings. And one of my cousins, um, he saw me, he always told me that you, nobody works like, like you work so hard mm-hmm. and like you're always like working and, and, and you seem like you're good, but like you're working way too much. And at that time I was working uh, at East Boston Savings Bank full time and I was working at a warehouse part time. So I was working 28 hours at the warehouse and then 40 hours at the bank. So li- literally I would leave my house at like six o'clock or you know, 5.30, I don't remember, like 5.30, six o'clock, go to the gym, go to the bank. And then after the bank at 4.30, I would go to the warehouse. So I was legit out from six and I would work until one in the morning oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> in a warehouse, just picking orders. And that was just like my life. So my cousin goes, he's like, dude, like how many hours are you putting in? And I'm like, I don't know, man, like 65, 70 hours every week. And he's like, why don't you come do Comcast? (laughs) Comcast, what do you mean Comcast? He's like, well, we just go and knock some doors um, and you sell Comcast. And I'm like, man, Comcast, I don't know. I I don't want to do that. Is anybody buying Comcast door to door? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, no, like, I, I don't want to do that. And um, another one of my friends, Felipe, he's like, dude, you should come do Comcast. You know, my my brother Tiago, he's doing Comcast. I'm like, guys, I got a I got a little kid, I got a daughter. I, I'm not, you guys are young, and they're like five years five years younger than me. So uh-huh. I can't have no responsibilities. I don't, I can't play around with my income, you know. And um, I'm like. Yeah, I, I just can't do it. I, there's no, I, I don't even think anybody would buy con. Like, how do you even offer it? You know, and they, they just kept telling me for months. Uh, and then one day, my cousin, uh, he's like, you should definitely come to Comcast. Like, he just kept telling me, but I'm like, why should I definitely do it now? And he's like, look, this is my check. And he showed me a check for $3,622.46. Oh, wow. You remember today? Yeah. The- <laughs> it changed my life. That, that check changed my life. And I said, Kev, how long did it take you to make this? And he said, two weeks. I said, two weeks? I'm making 2,800, I think it was, both jobs wow. in a month. In a month. I mm-hmm. said, wait a minute. So you're telling me you made $3,600 in two weeks. How many hours did you work? He was like, I don't know, man, like 18. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no way. You did not make that work in 18 hours a day for two weeks. And he said, I swear to God. I'm like, you know what, bro? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call you later. And we left it at that. I go to my computer and, and type out my resignation letter to the bank. Mm. With the bank. Okay? Because the way, the way I measured that decision was based on what I knew. And what I knew was my work ethic. Okay, so I did simple math. If Kevin, you know, my cousin, you know, made 3,600 bucks in two weeks working, call it 40 hours, right? 20, 36 hours. What if I work 60 hours a week for two weeks? Right. He could be a lot better than me, but I'm just w- putting way more hours than him. I got to at least make half of his results because I just calculated. He, he could be a lot better than me right now because he's been doing Comcast and he's better with people. Uh, I'm a shy person. I was a very shy person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like super shy person. Uh, when I first started working at the bank, I'm like, oh, do I have to ask these people to like open a bank account? That's embarrassing. And I, I am so grateful for the bank because it, it allowed me to open up, to asking people to open up accounts. But I figured, I said, look, if I put more hours than he's doing, double the hours, I'm gonna at least get half of his results. That's more than what I'm making now. Right. Okay? So I go into Comcast and you know I start applying the only principle that I live by, work the hours. 
Mm -hmm. And just like everything, if you put in the hours, you put in the effort, and I'm talking about honest effort, because a lot of times when we're, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or salespeople, they're like, I'm putting in the hours and they're prospecting for six hours, but they're really only talking to the prospects for two. So that's not really six hours. I mean, six hours knocking on doors and talking to the people. Right, right. Every single minute of those six hours. And um, I started getting these results. I started selling consistently. And uh, about a month in, my cousin goes, hey, man, uh, I'm leaving. I said, dude, what do you mean you're leaving? He's like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit Comcast. Um, it was like a month and a half. He's like, I'm going to quit Comcast. I'm like, so I just left my job who I, I've been doing banking for nine years almost here. I jumped ship and now you tell me you're leaving. Is this thing ending? Like what's happening here? <laughs> like, no, 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 it's not ending. But you know how we knock doors for Comcast and make, you know, $150, $300 a sale. Well, with solar, you can make around $1,500, $2,000 a sale. And I said, dude, I don't know what solar is. I don't know how you sell it. Get me in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, same principle. If I'm applying the 45, 60 hours that I'm doing here at Comcast, I'll just do the same thing. It doesn't matter what the product is. Right. That was my mindset. And um, I finally jumped into, into solar. I started with Solar City. Uh, that was my first solar sales job. I worked there for about, for about six months. And it's the same principle, right? Consistent hard work and living by your schedule allowed me to, to, to find the success that I was looking for in that industry as well. Got it. So you were working when you started with Solar City. Were you doing the 60 hours a week? Like, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. And, so, and like in average, what was your, your income like in for a week, a 60 hour week? So when I joined Solar City, Solar City was going through a transitional moment where you know a lot of people were leaving. Um, the the leaders there weren't weren't really focused on the business anymore, um, so it was on the decline. And I we didn't have much training, mm -hmm. not much training at all. Just a like Comcast. My cousin trained me in Comcast, and he gave me a pamphlet. And he said, "Here's a hundred bucks for a triple play. Go knock it." That's how much that I just went knocking doors like that. Mm -hmm. The transition to 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 from Comcast to Solar City was basically the same. I kid you not, guys. My mm -hmm. cousin, mm -hmm. I shouted my cousin for the first time, and my cousin had his pitch written down in his hand. <laughs> That's how I learned how to sell solar. Right? There's the lines. Go go knock doors. Oh, and he was just reading off his hand to the people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah. I had to sell soul. <laughs> so um and, and the pitch was just not a good pitch i was asking just people how come you don't have solar and they're like because i don't i don't want it they didn't know they didn't know exactly what solar was all about this was right. well, at the beginning almost um but i knew even with a bad pitch if i knocked enough doors i would find success mm. right and that's how it is with any type of sales. The mistake that people in sales uh, constantly make is that they're putting in the effort and they're, they're, they're putting in the hours and they're grinding at first and they start getting better. It's like the more you knock, the more you sell, the better you get. The more of that, right? That's all it is. The better we get, we make the biggest mistake ever. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake people make in sales as we progress, because we're putting in the hours, the better we get, the less effort we start putting in, mm -hmm. right? So at first, let's say it takes 20 doors or 20 cold calls to call somebody and book an appointment. When you're first starting, you're excited, right? Because one of the sources of inspiration that we have as human beings is starting something new, a new idea, a new job, we feel inspired, we feel unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And we're willing to put the effort because we are inspired and motivated. The problem is that inspiration and motivation, it's like a gas tank. It can only last so long, right? And the moment we start getting better at our job, 
we subconsciously start putting less effort. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the number one mistake people in sales or even starting a business. That's the, one of the biggest mistakes. Instead of increasing the effort because we're getting better, we decrease the effort because we're ten- we, we tend to look for the easier way out. Right. Yeah, so the uh, saying goes, consistency beats skill uh, all the time, right? All the time. Or talent, yeah. talent, right? All the time. Uh, so Don, a couple of things uh, that you're always dropping some nuggets here that I just want to circle back to. So you're a hustler, right? Since, since nine years old, you started working at the bank, hustling there, the warehouse job, you have a family at that point. I think a lot of people out there are stuck in that situation. They're like, mm-hmm. I want to improve. I want my life to change. Right. But this fear is holding me back, right? How did you get through that fear that could help somebody out there saying the same thing? They're like, shit, I want to get out of here. How do I do this? How do I work? I can't. So, so what it is, it's, it's basically how we, how we give meaning to things. Okay. So for example, for me, I was something, I was really good at giving, um, you know, my circumstances and this is subconsciously, right? Like I knew I was a hard worker and and a hustler and and I, and my work ethic, I always said my work ethic, it's unmatched. So I, I think that belief, that belief, and I, and I told myself so many times that I truly believe that my work ethic will allow me to accomplish anything I wanted to accomplish. So with somebody that's stuck and they're seeing, let's say, an opportunity, um, I, I truly believe that from the age of 18 to even the age of 40, we're here to make mistakes and take chances and go for the opportunity, right? And it's, it's scary at first, because you're like, oh, I have a family. Listen, we always figure it out. And when was the last time that we didn't have money and we're like, I just gave up? Nobody, nobody ever just gave up. We figure it out, we're still here, right? That means we figured it out. Somehow, some way, we always figure it out. Now, what we gotta focus on is expanding our comfort zone, okay? Because that's the true value of sales. Like to me, like sales and, 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 and leaving the bank and, and leaving the unknown, the biggest blessing behind that is I got to expand my comfort zone. And what you guys are doing right now, what I'm currently doing right now, is probably one of the best things somebody could potentially do because you're constantly expanding your comfort zone. Right. And tell me that when the last time that, you did something really hard and you, succeed, you succeeded at it and it made you unhappy. Never. <laughs> right. Never. Those, those are the happiest moments we have when we actually accomplish something really hard. So can you recall, because this is something that we always kind of preach, is like stretch that or, or get comfortable getting uncomfortable, right? right? Stretch that comfort zone, like you're saying. Right. So somebody out there that's struggling with, with stretching, right? some of the tools that you use to stretch yourself even now, what are they? So, so for me, um, I try to, um, I do a, a few things. So for example, I have my routines, I have my morning routines. And one of the things that I do every single morning is to get uncomfortable. One of the first things I do. So I take a minute, a, a ice cold shower for a whole minute, right? Because I know it's hard. It's uncomfortable. I'm walking around the house trying to just, figure out things to do before I have to shop, uh, jump in the shower. But that's part of what I do to intentionally get uncomfortable. So right now, every time I'm in turf, for example, or I'm prospecting, what I do is every time I see a house that I'm gonna go knock and I say, ah, I'll come back to it. I purposely go knock those doors. Or there's days where I'm like, ah, I don't wanna knock today. Today I'm not, and I give, a, I give myself a million excuses. Just like every salesperson, right? We're really good at selling. So we tend to sell ourselves on not doing what we're supposed to do because it's hard, right? So the days that I'm like, ah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make the phone call. I don't wanna knock the door. I purposely and intentionally go knock the doors that I skip on my good days. So mm-hmm. I tell myself, look, if I would have sold myself on the fact that I shouldn't go to work today, 
why not go attack the doors that I skip on the days that I'm on fire? Fire. So I'm and purposely for catching what you're saying here is uh, that awareness piece, right? That right. thought that you're having in your mind, not you, it's just a thought that's coming up. <laughs> right. I don't want to knock today, or I should skip this house today, right? You're catching yourself of those thoughts, and then you're saying, I'm doing it anyways, right? It's like that that's, book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, so. go ahead. <laughs> it's no, it's not like that that book is that is out there is in the biggest problem. Like, I don't know if you ever read it, but it, it talks about that. Like how to like overcome the biggest, like in your day, if you have like 10 things to do, like prioritize the things that are harder to do. Right. Because those are probably the, the ones that are going to generate, you know, more results. So right. it applies to that. So that's, that's I mean, it, it's even like you, you're waking up to this because you're saying to yourself, man, I'm sure that you're not saying to yourself, I want to jump in that ice cold water. Right. You're like, already that that's the first thought you have. Oh, I don't want to wake up this early. Should now I have to, right? Because now I had that thought, I have to go. Right. So what what does your morning routine look like? So people just have a good understanding. Like maybe I should replicate or use. Like one what of these time things. do you get up? Like I know you you do a little bit of reading, hey, personal. We gotta course. understand. Like a lot of people like Don, like like you, like even me, or or a lot of people that are trying to stay together and just grow together, right? They all have very very similar right. things in their life. Might be routines, might be the way that they handle the business, whatever. A lot of commonality. So what, what's yours? Yeah, and that, that's a really key point that, that we, uh, you brought up uh, because a lot of people ask me, what, what are your hours? What, how's your pitch? What do you say at the door? How are you constantly selling? And I'm a firm believer that the results that I get at work or in business, um, it's a huge reflection of our daily habits and our daily routines, right? Take Michael Jordan. When, you're, when, you're seeing him, when you were seeing him you know, crush the basketball game, Everybody's like, he's great. But what made him great is what he did when nobody was watching. Mm -hmm. The early practices, the late practices. So I believe our daily routines and our daily actions impact our lives the most. So for me, I'm, I'm an early riser. I want to be up by five the latest. Um, I typically wake up. One of the key components for me, it's mind management. And it's something that we don't really think about. And, and we live in a world of distractions right now. Everything's a distraction. Your phone goes off, an email, uh, a notification on social media. There's so many distractions. And we tend to uh, forget that we have to manage our mind and our energy. We wake up and we're like, okay, let's get, let's get the day going. But we don't really have in our awareness that our, our mind and our energy has a, it's like a gas tank. It right. drains. And every single time you're dealing with, Social, like this, all these distractions. So for me, the most important piece is if I win the morning, I win the day. Mm. That's the number one thing for me. I got to win the morning. I don't even worry about what, how much am I going to, like, what am I going to do at work? What my intensity is? I do worry about that. But the main thing for me is I got to win my morning. I got to win my morning. And how do I win the morning? To me, I have to wake up super early, five o'clock the latest. I don't touch my phone for the first hour. Mm -hmm. I don't even look at it. I don't even look at the time on my phone. I do not want to touch my phone. So as soon as I wake up, my, my phone is just completely dead to me uh, because I want to give that hour to myself. Right. I want to be able to give the hour to myself in order to give myself to other people. Because that's, that's one of my main things. It's like, how do I impact others, right? Right now, the best way I can impact others is to show them a way, lead them to financial freedom, lead them to, um, you know, being successful at this job. Because my platform is Sunrun and, and helping, um, you know, the reps that I work for find success in sales because it's not an easy job. So i got to give myself that hour in order to get myself in that state of mind where I could attack the day uh, and give the most of myself. So I basically wake up, I, um, I write my goals down every single morning. I actually have my journal right here. So I come to this office and I just, every single day, I just write my, my goals down, okay? I write down my yearly goals, okay? I write down my daily goals, okay? I write down uh, in at least three people that I'm going to impact that day. So I, as long as I'm going and attacking the day with that mindset, right, my, my, my goals are clear. I know exactly what I want for the year. I know exactly what I want for the day. 
And if I'm going with the single purpose of impact and at least three people that day, can I really fail? Right. No, right. That's oh. yeah. right. So that's why it's so important that that first hour to just give it back to yourself. We're constantly giving, giving, giving to other people, giving our attention, our energy on social media, emails, customers. We're constantly giving ourselves, but we don't give ourselves any time to, uh, to ourselves. And we, that's so important. So goal setting every single morning, right? What goals, you know, financial goals, um, the effort I want to put in. I even measure my effort. I measure my effort every single day. Uh, and most importantly, how, how am I gonna impact people? What people do I wanna impact that day? For example, today, the, today the, one of the things is, I wanna impact people with this Zoom call. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things, that, one of my, the, the, the three people or three groups of people that I wanted to impact today. Um, then uh, what I do is I meditate. I meditate for 10 minutes and then I go to the gym or I go for a run. So that first hour is just all for me, all for me. Um, and then as soon as that, um, you know, the gym or the run, um, I take that cold shower, <laughs> which sucks. But I, I mean, but it's one of the best things. Cause like, it puts me in a state of mind where if I take that cold shower, I'm gonna hit the hard doors. Right. I, already I already got, I got, I got the, the hardest thing of the day out of the way. The right. rest is easy. And then, you know, what if, if it's a meeting day, I prepare for the meeting. If it's not a meeting day, um, I prepare for the day to knock doors. And then I just knock doors from, you know, one or two o'clock to 7.30 or eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, once I'm done with work, uh, I'll reach out to the people that I have to reach out, whether it's customers or, or, or my reps. And then I go back to the journal, okay? I go back to the journal and I measure my effort. I measure the, uh, the goals that I set for that day whether I accomplished them and why I did or why did I not accomplish any of those particular goals. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, the self-awareness piece, right? Because if I'm like, okay, uh, you know, one of the goals was to work out and I didn't work out. Why didn't I work out? Simple, simple answer would be, I just didn't have time. But is that the real answer? Because <laughs> we, we don't lack time. It was a lack of focus or I just let my emotions get the best of me. And I just told myself, I'll go tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah. if that's the answer, I go back and, and I revisit my health goal because that's going to drive me the following days. Because like, it's not about not making mistakes. We should push to make as many mistakes as we can, but we should be self-aware and, and be present to correct those mistakes. Right. And that was great how you actually broke down your day. That's another consistent thing that we see in top achievers. There's no guessing of what I'm going to do right. tomorrow. I know exactly how the day is going to be structured out for me. There's structure, mm -hmm. time blocking, right? Now, did you always time block even since you're nine years old? Or is this something that you picked up and how has it uh, influenced you? That, that's a really good question. So, uh, that that the answer to that question we have to go back to 2017. So in 2017, um, I was with Sunrun now for or Vivint for uh, about a year and a half, mm -hmm. and that's when I made my first six figures, right? And but I always wondered, I'm like these top producers, like I'm I'm getting nine installs, fourteen installs a quarter. I had one with like twenty one installs. And I would see these guys, you know, performing, producing 40 installs, 35. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, do they have like a different clock? Like, <laughs> you know, they put like, like a gold mine somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what's the secret? Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm the hardest work. Like, and, and it, it was a conflicting idea for me because I'm like, I, there's no more time. There's no way there's more time. I, I got to figure this out. And going back to what I said earlier, hardship is our biggest blessing. Mm. Hardship is the biggest blessing because it teaches us about life and it teaches us about ourselves and who we are, right? So that year I ended up going through, uh, I think one of the darkest moments of my life. Um, you know, I went through a breakup, uh, I went through a depression. Um, my, my life was a mess completely. 
Um, I, and, and it was just a mixture. It was like the perfect storm. The mm -hmm. reason why it was the perfect storm was because during that transitional moment and the struggles mentally and, and, and emotionally, I got promoted to being a district manager and opening up a brand new office. Wow. Brand new office, brand new state, which is New Hampshire, and brand new product. The product was completely different. It wasn't like it is in mass. Um, but knowing knowing how I was, I couldn't I couldn't back down. I, I just said, look, I'm gonna, I don't care how I feel, I'm just gonna figure it out. I'm gonna put in the work and figure it out. But it doesn't always work, work out the way you want it to work. And I ended up spending all my money. So I made, I think that's 138 grand that year. That was from January to September. I was broke in September. Like broke, like negative account broke. Wow. Like negative. Like I had, I had no gas money. I had to borrow money for gas money. I owed the IRS over $55,000. I was in debt. Um, I had to go back to my mom's house. I moved back to my mom's house. Um, no money, no accounts in the near future. And we only get paid if accounts get installed. So it was like two, three months without no money coming in. And I, I called my, 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 one of my mentors, uh, who is the VP of sales and, and my manager, um, Adam, I said, dude, I'm quitting. I got to quit. And he's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I, I got to quit. I, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, mm -hmm well, what's happened? I'm like, dude, I have no money. I'm stressed out. And mind you, I was traveling from Malden all the way to London there in New Hampshire every day. Wow. That I'm was like, your, your, your neighborhood, like your area where you were. Doing that's that. where you opened up there. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even have money to go make money. I got to go back to the bank. And he said, no, you can't quit. So um, he helped me out. The company gave me an advance. So, so I wouldn't quit. And that was the biggest pivot point or most important moment of my life when it comes to my career and the way I even think today. I think one of the most important moments of my life. And it was because I, I, I felt lost. I felt alone. I hit rock bottom. Right. That was, I, I don't think that you can go lower than that. I was at my mom's house, for God's sake. <laughs> 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 Credit, the creditors were calling me. They're going to, you know, take my, my, my car away. Like I was like four months late on my car payment. I was a mess. I was a disaster. And hmm. I decided, I decided that moment that I was going to change my life. I just made a decision, a hard decision. I looked around, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I cannot live like this anymore. Okay. And I started making small changes. I started going back to the gym. And it's crazy enough that when you decide, the universe will put the people, the situations, and, um, and circumstances to help you with that, with that decision that you make. Right. And a friend of mine, Alejandro, he lives in, in, in Washington, DC. He, sent, he sends me an email. And this email says, let's make millions in 2018. And I said, wow, I mean, I ain't got nothing. So I got nothing to lose. Let's check out this email. So I opened up the email and it was a whole bunch of um, programs, Grant Cardone, uh, just a whole, you know, uh, Bob Proctor, just a whole bunch of programs and none of them worked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> them worked. Got, oh, what do you mean? It didn't work. Like none oh. of the links work for the programs. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Because, um, <laughs> He, he, I guess they copied it from somewhere from like a different file. I don't know what it was, but none of them worked. And I click on one uh, and I didn't know who Ty Lopez was at the time. Uh, and I click on it. I'm like, I don't even know who this guy is. Like the good ones are not available. Tony Robbins is not available. Like none of the good ones are available. Like, this one's available. Let's click on it. So I click on it and, and the link opens up and it says 66 days, 66 steps to the good life. Hell wealth, love, and happiness. And I said, I ain't got none of that. So let me read it. Let, let me read it. I ain't got none. I got no love. I got no health. I got no wealth. And I'm, I'm happy as shit right now. <laughs> let, <laughs> let, let me read it. In a nutshell here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what could I lose at this point? 
so I click on it and I started listening to one audio a day. It was like an hour a day. Um, and I started catching these small ideas, you know, re start reading every day, get a mentor. And I it started changing the way I, 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 I saw business and I saw myself, right? Because again, it goes back to, uh, we get what we think we deserve. The reason why I got to that point, I just felt like I deserved that or it wasn't enough to get the success, to get the accolades, to get the money. I, I just felt that I didn't deserve that. And that's when I picked up personal development. It was one of the best moments of my life, seeing myself in that, in that couch at my mom's house, looking around and telling, me, telling myself that I was fed up with my life. That was one of the best moments of my life because it, it introduced me to personal development, right? And today, the reason why I am so successful at my job is because I work harder on, harder, harder on me and myself than what I do at my job. That's my main focus. Every day, I'm constantly working on myself. Every day, I'm constantly working on becoming more persuasive and influential. Every day, I'm, I'm working harder on my disciplines. How do I become more disciplined? How do I become more persistent? Because the rest comes after right. right and what i what i tell everybody about this opportunity and and being in sales and and, and you know not having uh, to rely on a paycheck the most valuable thing that we have is what we become in making the money what who we become in the process of becoming successful or whatever field whether it's real estate sales whatever sales we're doing is not the money that's valuable is who we become in the process of making the money. That's so cool because you know what I'm thinking while you're saying that if you don't change who you become because you're gonna make more money, it just amplifies who you already are, which might be a good thing, but imagine you work and you make more money and then you're expanding your mind. You're helping more people like you're doing now. I know in the path you're on, it's great, right? And some of the things that you said back here, people should pay attention, right? Because you were talking about People wait for certain things. Mm -hmm. They get stuck. We call it analysis paralysis. They right. don't move. <laughs> you decide. You decided to make that change, right? You looked at yourself. You said, that's it. I'm done. I think a lot of people draw the line in the sand and say, that's it. I'm done. I'm making the, the, choice. the choice. I'm deciding. I'm moving forward. I'm not being stuck. I'm not going to be afraid. That was right. 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 It, it comes down because like we're always making three decisions. We're like constantly making the, uh, like three decisions. What we focus on is one of them, right? That's something we decide. And the problem is that most of us were focused on what happened in the past, not in the future, mm -hmm. right? The past should only serve us as a lesson. That's it. If we focus in the past, we're not going to be able to focus and in in, in, in get a clear vision of the future. And I think a lot of us are stuck trying to figure out how to become better at sales when all we got to do is shift the focus from what happened in the past and really focus on where we're going, where, where we're going and where we're headed, right? Yet, go back to the past just to see what lessons you could, you could draw out out of the past. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So... So let me fast forward now. Alejandro, that's your cousin, you said? One of my friends, yep. Yeah, okay. So he sent you that email. Ty Lopez pops up. You start listening. You start developing yourself or working on yourself. That's huge, right? So explain to that that change. What did that look like as soon as those changes started to happen? How how soon? Because people could see this and be like, well, I'm going to do that. Right, yeah. So I, I think what... what the main thing about personal development is it changes your what the meaning you give to things, right? It's like if for me, for example, if I go knock a door and you know somebody says no, instead of just getting down on myself, I'm like that's not a qualified buyer. Mm. How could I really get upset, right? Unless I'm expecting to sell that person, then I would get uh, upset. So what personal personal development allowed me to do is really get a clear understanding that everything that happens to me is for me. It's for me to grow. Even the hard part, like the hard things that happen, those are the best moments of my life. 
because those are the ones that allow me to grow the most in my career, in my personal life. So what personal development uh, did for me is it expanded my mindset and my ideas, right? It's like when you go to the gym, your muscles expand. Right. We're trying to make a million dollars or have a seven figure income with a $10 or a hundred dollar mindset or mm. work ethic. It doesn't match. Yeah. It doesn't match. And all we do is we get upset because we're expecting that outcome, but we're taking a completely different route. We're not taking the decision, the actions necessary that will match that goal. Um, one of the main things for me was I got really goal oriented, right? Before I'm like, I'm just going to work hard and the money's going to come in. Mm -hmm. I'll work hard for what? Right. So, so you got more focus on your goals, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, goal setting is one of the most important pieces where I have a vision board. I look at it every single day. I believe that I'm going to achieve it. The more it is, the more it is in front of me, the more clear my vision and my path is, right? When the struggles come, when the hardships come, I'm like, this is part of the process in order for me to achieve my ultimate goal. Right. right? So personal development taught me one of the main things is having clear definitive goals. I know what I want. And most importantly is why I want it. Why do you want that big house? Because I want a big house. That's not going to motivate you enough. How about I want that big house because I want to create unbelievable experiences for me and my family. And I, I, want, to, I want to have a place where I could cre create unforgettable memories. Mm -hmm. See, so it's a little more fuel when you put a why behind the goal. Right. Right. Why do you want to be a multimillionaire? Because I want to be able to travel the world and help thousands and millions of people. That's more powerful than just making or becoming a multimillionaire. Right. right? So find out, behind you you. find out what you want and then find out exactly why you want it. I want a million so, dollars. Right, before. right. And I think, you know, that's, that's sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, I could say I've done it before where you, you're vague when it comes to like defining your goals. But I think it's important where you're saying like creating that urgency because I feel like even even owning a big house, like you're saying, like you have to really understand what it means for you and your family and, and you know, what moves you inside when you think about it, right? Like what's important about it. So, so let's say for people right now, because we, we want it to impact people together with this Zoom call. And for people who are watching this and who are not goal setting, where, where should they start? Because it's, it's, it's hard to think like, like, okay, what do I want? Okay. I want money, all these things, but like, how do they start doing it? Like, what's, what's your advice, advice on that? Yeah, so the way we, we should be setting goals is we have to break it down into four categories. Mm -hmm. Health, right? Uh, finances, experiences, and relationships, okay? So those are the main four points. Because, like, a lot of times we get caught up in, like, I want to make a million dollars, I want to make a million dollars, and we forget, we tend to forget the other sides of, of our life, right? And then how you do one thing is how you do everything. Right. Your health is lacking. You're not going to be able to perform at the highest level to make that million dollars. If right. your relationships are failing, you're not going to be able to perform at that high level and make that million dollars, right? So it's got to be all those four pillars, right? The number one thing is how much money exactly you want and give it a date. Because it's like, hey, I want to make more money. How much more? Um, <laughs> How much is more? Yeah. <laughs> so you measure your effort. You can't measure your effort. Hey, I want to make a million dollars this year. You're able to measure that because if it's June and you're at 300,000, you got two choices. Renegotiate your goal or pick it up and put more effort. Right. But you need a definitive figure how much you want and by when you want it. That's how you become uh, goal oriented. It's like, hey, I want to lose some weight. Okay, you lost a pound, goal accomplished, great job. No, how about I want to lose 15 pounds by June? That's a definitive goal. You're able to measure your effort. You're, you're able to effort, uh, uh, measure your effort and your progress, right? Because if you're three pounds away, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm almost there. So again, you get inspired. You get motivated to continue and keep working hard.
So main, main, main key points there is make goals on those four pillars of life, health, wealth, love, uh, uh, and experiences, right? What experiences you want to create, put a, a number, an exact number, okay? And put a time frame. When do you want to accomplish it? And then lastly, and most importantly, why are those goals important to you? The why is why, like, because like a lot of people say, oh, my why is my family. My why is my daughter. No, that's not my why. That's my responsibility. <laughs> my why, she's my responsibility to take care of her and pave a better future for her. That's not my why. That's not my why. That's my sole responsibility to take care of my kids. That's it. Not my why. Yeah. Right? Your why is why you get up every single day and you get after it. Your why is why, why is a million dollars or a hundred thousand, one fifty, three? Why is that important to you? That's your why. So it's not it's not your family. Yeah, your family's a motivation, right? right. But it's not your why. Your family's re responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. So yeah, I think people are starting to understand, you know, what how to do some of the things that we've been talking about here and, and have a, a better idea of who you are as a person as well, right? Um, first, decide. Make a decision in your life and do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after that, set your goals and get clear on why. What's your why? It can't be like you're saying, like your family. It can't be your wife. It can't be anybody else. It's got to be with you, right? Mm -hmm. And attach the experiences. I mean, that, that's huge. Power. right the feelings behind why you want to do all these things you want to do and you got to get to know yourself right one of the main things with personal development and the reason why i tell people read read one book a month if you don't have time to read one I, i'm reading one a week right now if you mm -hmm. can't do one a week start with one a month or one a quarter but just get in the habit of reading and expanding your mind that's so important so critical Big one, yeah so yeah mindset yeah that's 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 yeah. the yeah, because like when you're when you're in that state of mind of just creating, um, you know, new ideas in your mind, you're gonna be able to catch ideas, right? There's money, there's an abundance of money, it's abundance abundance of opportunity, mm -hmm. but if you're not focused on growing your mind, they just they can just be flying by you, and you're not you're not catching those ideas or those opportunities because you're not in that state of mind. Correct. Yeah. So and and we'll you know we'll, we're almost an hour in, but I wanted to ask you this before before we finish up. So let's say if you can travel back in time and bump into the old Don back in the days when you were in your lower um, you know point, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> um, the the best advice. That's a really good question. So the best advice I would give myself is double down even more on personal development. Mm -hmm. I would people that's the key that's the key how do i double down in personal development if i was putting in eight hours a week i would i would have started putting 16 20 i would that would have been my part-time job that would have been the 20 hour uh, a week thing and that's that's about the amount of time that i'm putting in now and my life has exploded into change mm -hmm. and i owe it to that because i'm constantly changing i'm constantly growing I'm constantly seeking opportunities and bigger opportunities, right? Because that just circles back around and giving me more confidence to attack the bigger goals. Because hmm. right? I'm constantly in a growth mindset. I'm constantly chasing the hardships. I'm constantly chasing to be uncomfortable. And I'm, I'm always constantly chasing to accomplish the bigger goals. And by me constantly teaching myself and working on myself gives me the confidence to go after those goals. That is awesome. That's, that's it's always a great time hanging out with this guy. This guy is I a know. legend in the solar space. He's number one in the company, I believe. And uh, he's just a wealth of information. Every time we hang out, we just like we, we just want to super motivated. So yeah. we're, we're, we love that we could share this with everybody else too. Yeah, appreciate it. You guys are a fountain of energy for me. You guys motivate and inspire me. Keep doing what you're doing. And mm -hmm. Always great. Every time we hang out, it's just always a great time. Awesome. I'll see you next week. <laughs> we have you. We have you book for next Saturday. That's it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, right, Don, yeah, thank Don. you so much for you for your for your time, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye bye.